What's going on my Jack brother, Coach Scott here. And today we're gonna to talk about the seven biggest fat loss mistakes that you need to avoid while getting lean. Mistake number one is losing sight of your ultimate goal or worse yet, chasing after someone else's goal. What I mean by that is initially you may set a goal to like lose a certain amount of weight, maybe 20 pounds and weigh a certain amount at the end of your fat loss phase. Or you may have a body fat percentage in mind that you wanna aim for, maybe 10% body fat where you're really freaking lean at the end of that. Now it's great to have these targets because it gives you something to aim for, but it's really important that you are flexible with these targets targets because weighing a certain amount or hitting a certain body fat percentage isn't your ultimate goal. Chances are your ultimate goal is something along the lines of looking great naked or looking great on the beach. For me, personally, my goal is always to feel my best while living my life to the fullest with confidence, pride, zest, and vitality. I want to thrive in all aspects of my life. I want to be able to give the absolute best of myself to all that I'm doing. And it doesn't matter to me what the hell that number says on the scale or what it says the reading is with my body fat percentage. What matters to me is how I freaking feel. And the thing is, you're not going to know the body weight or the level of leanness that you need to achieve in order to feel your best and thrive in life until you get there. For myself personally, when I went through my big transformation 11 years ago and lost 50 pounds of fat, I thought I was only going to need to lose 30 pounds in order to feel my best and thrive. And I needed to push it beyond that 20 more pounds in order to get to that point. I think a lot of people underestimate how much weight, how much fat they need to lose in order to look their best, feel their best, perform their best, and absolutely thrive in all aspects of life. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, I pushed it beyond that level of leanness to get stage shredded for a bodybuilding competition. And I definitely wasn't feeling my best at that level of leanness. And based on my past 10 years experience of going through multiple muscle building and fat loss phases, I know I've got about a five five pound sweet spot where I absolutely feel my best, perform my best and thrive in all aspects of my life. I can lose a few pounds and still feel freaking incredible. I can gain a few pounds, still feel freaking incredible. If I gain more than five pounds, that's when I start to notice my performance drop off a little bit. I don't quite have that same kind of jump in my step with a lot of the athletics that I perform. If I lose more than three pounds, uh, I start to notice a diminish in my performance as well. And I also start to not look my best. I start to look a a little more depleted and um, I just don't have the same again kind of energy that skip in my step when I start losing beyond that point so it's a nice little five pound six pound sweet spot that I like to kind of maintain uh, throughout the year but that's me this is the weight and the level of leanness that suits me best where I feel my best, where I am thriving. Like I said earlier, don't chase after someone else's goals. Just because this is a level of leanness that I feel my best at doesn't mean that it's a level of leanness that you're going to thrive at. So don't chase after specific numbers. Use them as a guiding post, but be flexible with them. And don't lose sight of your ultimate goal, which should be to feel your best, to be the healthiest version of yourself where you are living life with confidence, pride, zest, and vitality in all that you're doing. Mistake number two is thinking that just because you eat healthy, you should be losing fat. I see this all the freaking time. It actually came up during a, a recent video where I was talking with one of my coaching clients, David. And I realized that I was eating large quantities of healthy food, uh, macros, um, but never watched calories had no, I have no really, I up until then I had no relationship with calories. And I realized that everything I was doing was putting me at like 4,000, 5,000 calories. I'm, I only weigh uh, at the time I only weighed, um, one, 70. There's no way I'm going to lose fat with uh, with this amount of intake. Um, so it was a great learning experience for him, eye-opening experience for him to see just how many calories he needed to consume to start losing the amount of fat that he desires. We had to drop it below 2,000 calories in order to achieve that goal. And we dropped it a little bit lower, a little bit lower in order to uh, maintain, sustain the level of uh, fat loss that he was aiming for towards the end of his cutting phase. Now, I do think that is a great first step in a fat loss journey to try to improve upon the quality foods that you're consuming because that is going to help you feel better, perform better, basically thrive throughout the day there. But you gotta understand that it's not so much the healthy foods that are helping you lose weight, it is the quantity of food that you're consuming. I am consuming the same healthy foods whether I am in fat loss mode, maintenance mode, or trying to build muscle. It's all the exact same foods healthy foods, uh, it's just the portions that change. It's the calorie intake that changes based on my goals there. I also don't want you to get stuck in the mindset that there are 
healthy foods or unhealthy foods, it's important to include all of your favorite treats in your overall nutrition plan. I enjoy craft beers, I enjoy chips, I enjoy cheesecake and pizza, and all the good foods that I'm sure you do as well. I'm just responsible with those portion sizes and I recognize how I feel when I'm consuming those foods and how I feel when I'm consuming the whole natural nutrient rich foods. And again, like I prefer to thrive in everyday life. Uh, so I'm gonna consume more of those nutrient rich foods. I'm always gonna try to improve upon that uh, in years to come, improve upon the quality of my nutrition. Mistake number three is losing focus on the weekends. And once again, I had a great conversation with a coaching client this week uh, where I noticed that his weight spiked up and I was looking at his food journal and like this doesn't make sense based on everything I'm seeing here. Uh, so I reached out to him to see what was going on and he said, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm a bit discouraged here. I was really strict throughout the week, but then on the weekend, both Saturday and Sunday, I went out for dinner and I had wine both nights. So it was a lesson learned for him. He, he had this heightened sense of awareness with it. He's got to keep it to just one night. But even with that one night out, you still got to be responsible with that evening out, especially when you are consuming alcohol as well. Uh, because when you are consuming alcohol, um, basically you're more likely that food that you're consuming at that time is more likely to be stored as fat. Your body's just basically um, shutting down a lot of those other processes in order to just get that toxin out of your body. So it's gonna store that fat rather than try to burn it off. It wants to burn off the alcohol first. Uh, so there's that issue, but there's also the issue of not, not really truly knowing how many calories are in that meal that you are consuming there. It's really tough with restaurants, even if they put their calorie labels on, on some of the foods that they're consuming, it's still, it's not gonna be exactly portioned out perfectly or anything like that. Um, so you do gotta be very careful. You gotta be very responsible when you're dining out, even that one time. Again, you wanna try to, you want to live your life to the fullest. You wanna make this process as sustainable as possible. You don't wanna be as big of an interruption to your lifestyle as possible. You wanna still have some fun throughout it, but you do have to be responsible during these times on the weekend. You can't lose complete focus. You can't completely let loose. Um, maybe I plan for a little bit more, eat a little bit less throughout the day to kind of make up. I always find when I'm going out for dinner, I will always over estimate how many calories I'm consuming there. Uh, that way, if it's if I'm actually consuming less than what I think I'm consuming, boom, that's that's a win. I'd rather I'd rather go that route than underestimate it and come out of the, the, the dining out experience and, oh geez, I probably consumed much more than I really thought I was right there. So lesson learned, you gotta keep this, try to keep as much structure on the weekends as you do during the week. Mistake number four is following a diet or exercise plan that adds stress to your life. Again, the whole purpose of you getting lean and following this lifestyle is to feel your your best, perform your best, and thrive in all aspects of life. If this is causing you stress, you're not going to be feeling your best. So you wanna make sure that you are keeping things simple. Don't overcomplicate your nutrition. Don't overcomplicate your training. It's really, guys, I mean, getting lean, it's it's pretty freaking simple. It's not easy, it's freaking hard, but it is simple. Stick with the bare bone basics. Stick, stick with the fundamentals. Stick with simple structure. You wanna set yourself up for success. So know yourself. Know your lifestyle like how many days of training can you commit to realistically how long do you realistically have to spend in the gym each and every day how about cardio rather than setting your alarm for 3 30 in the morning so you can get to the gym and do 45 minutes on the stair climb or whatever maybe you talk with your spouse and say all right Honey, after dinner, let's get out for a walk. Just do something that you can be active with the family. Kind of kill two birds with one stone. You're doing something active, something fun with the family. You're creating a bonding experience. Do some hoops with the kids. Just get out on the paddleboard together. Just be active together as a family or with your friends. Create a bonding experience around it rather than having to interrupt your sleep schedule in order to try to get in some extra cardiovascular activity there. It's about doing things that are going to add joy to your life, joy to this experience, something that you're going to sustain for the long term. What I do, my active lifestyle, 100% exactly the same, whether I'm in fat loss mode, muscle building mode, maintenance mode, I want to live my life to the fullest. I am out participating in activities that I absolutely freaking enjoy. The only thing that changes for me when I am in fat loss mode is the number of calories that I'm consuming. Mistake number five is not prioritizing sleep. I'm going to continue to say this till I'm blue in the face. It still blows my mind how many people just refuse to 
prioritize sleep. They'd rather just scroll through their phone at night or watch TV programs till they're late at night thinking that's how you relax and unwind. At the end of the day, sleep is your number one priority. You get uh, at least seven to nine hours of quality sleep each and every night. It's gonna help you control your appetite. It's gonna give you more energy to perform your best, move your best. It's gonna help you burn more calories because you're gonna be more active. If you aren't getting seven hours of quality sleep each and every night, chances are you're gonna to wanna to sit on your butt a lot more throughout the day. So you're gonna burn less calories. It's gonna have an impact on your testosterone levels. It's gonna have an impact on your mood, your overall well-being. So many other factors that come into play, not a lot, let alone that the health benefits overall, preventing diseases, um, memory loss and everything, memory sustainability and all that stuff. So prioritize freaking sleep. Prioritize freaking sleep. I'm gonna keep saying it till I'm blue in the face forever and ever and ever. Make it your top priority. Mistake number six is not having a heightened sense of awareness throughout the day with how you're feeling, how your body is responding to all that you're doing. Again, when it comes to sleep, pay attention to how you feel if you're only getting six, six and a half hours of sleep. Yeah, you can get through the day, but how different do you feel when you're getting seven, seven and a half, eight hours of sleep? Do you have more energy? Is your mood more elevated? Are you on your feet more? So pay attention to those kinds of things. With nutrition, pay attention to, like have a heightened sense of awareness while you're eating. If you're slowing down, like do you notice that when you're, you're in a rush and you're scarfing down the food, you're more likely to consume more food because you don't realize you're not giving your body that chance to um, send the signals that you're full. Have a heightened sense of awareness to how you feel hours after having a meal. Which meals uh, satisfy you the most? What meals sustain your energy for longer? Uh, what meals give you more energy? What meals, meals give you a spike in energy that make you crash? Having a heightened sense of awareness with all of that. Having a heightened sense of awareness with your training, like how many sets you're performing on average, uh, from week to week and how that has an impact on you. Like if you start to ramp up the number of sets, what point do you reach when you start to feel fatigued, beat down, run down? So finding your sweet spot when it comes to training volume and the number of weeks that, um, number of workouts that you're performing throughout the week. So really having a heightened sense of awareness with, again, how each exercise feels for you and just during the workout, having a heightened sense of work of awareness during your workout itself, having that focus, like really, feeling the muscles working, the target muscles being activated during that training session. Just having a heightened sense of awareness with all that you're doing. What, what helps you comply to this lifestyle the best? Have a heightened sense of awareness with that more than anything, because so many people get like overly ambitious in the beginning. They try to do too much with exercise and try to be overly restrictive with their nutrition, and then boom, they throw in the towel because they just can't sustain it. So really becoming aware of the lifestyle that suits you best that's going to allow you to comply to this lifestyle for the long term. I mean, you're really setting yourself up for things aren't gonna be changing much after you achieve your fat loss goal. And this ties into mistake number seven, which is not having a plan after you achieve your fat loss goal, which is why I see a lot of people end up regaining some, if not all, or even more of the weight that they lost during the fat loss phase because basically they achieve their goal and they get out, they celebrate, they're like, woohoo, now I can indulge, now I can get back to eating away all my favorite foods that I was missing out on all this time. Next thing you know, boom, scale weight goes up. So you really gotta have a plan. I encourage you to uh, maintain your weight. Hold that weight for two to four months. Really try to establish this as your new set point. Get comfortable with maintaining that weight. So after you achieve your fat loss goal, I encourage you to, to try to bump up really close to maintenance level calories uh, right out of the gates. You don't have to do like this really super slow reverse diet thing. Just, I'd probably undershoot maintenance, what you think your maintenance is by about 100 calories hold that for about two weeks, see how your body responds. You're gonna experience initial uh, weight gain in the first couple of days because of the food volume in your digestive system, increase the water weight, your muscles are gonna fit, be filled with a little bit more uh, muscle glycogen there. So you want, you will experience, uh, even though you're maintained, you're at maintenance level calories, even still a tiny bit below maintenance level calories, it's not fat you're gaining, it's food volume in your digestive system. But then after that initial spike, it should level off. If you still find you're losing a little bit more, then you can bump it up uh, just a little bit more and really try to find that maintenance. Don't, don't rely on the calculators rely on your body's feedback, but you really gotta be consistent with your intake um, in order to really know what your maintenance level calories is. So it's still work, it still takes some effort after fat loss. So you're still gonna be very diligent with monitoring your intake. Sure, you can have a little bit of uh, an indulgence that first day to kind of celebrate your successes, but be responsible with that and try to keep it as close to maintenance as, as possible there. And again, how you approach your fat loss when you're, again, doing it in a simple structured way where you're eating the same foods that you would be, whether you're in maintenance or muscle building mode, uh, when you're living a 
lifestyle that's going to be exactly the same. It makes it very easy to transition from fat loss to maintenance to muscle building because it's all a very similar lifestyle. You're including all your favorite foods each and every time. You're loving everything that you're consuming. There's no drastic change uh, that's going on there. So highly encourage you to have that plan of action to get yourself up to maintenance as quickly as possible, hold it for a few months, and then decide, all right, it's time to build some muscle here and take a nice gentle uh, surplus, a slow and steady approach to building muscle throughout that time. So really taking a big picture outlook on what's not only gonna happen during this fat loss phase, but what's going to happen beyond it. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please do me a favor, smash that thumbs up button, I'd really appreciate it. If you wanna see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that alert button so you're notified each time I upload a video. If you know a fellow bro who would benefit from watching today's video, please do me a favor and share it with them. More than Thing. I'd love to hear from you down in the comment section below. Share your thoughts, share your insights, share your feedback. Before you go, don't forget to download your free guide, Jacked After 40. Have yourself an amazing day. Catch you in the next video.